Hey everyone, today I'm going to be levitating particles with light. Light has no mass, and if you remember Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared, that should pose a little bit of a problem, because if you plug in zero for mass, that would mean that light has no energy. But actually, E equals mc squared is not the full equation. It's an abbreviated form of the full equation for energy. And that's the energy squared equals p, which is momentum squared, times the speed of light squared, plus m squared, which is mass squared, times the speed of light to the fourth power. When an object is moving through space to get its full energy, you have to account for its momentum and its mass. When a particle is at rest, just sitting there, then you don't have to account for its momentum anymore and the equation reduces to its famous form, which is E equals mc squared. But for light, because it doesn't have any mass, we have to use the full equation. So we set m equal to zero, and this just reduces to E equals momentum times the speed of light. So particles of light, or photons, get all of their energy from their momentum and not from their mass. That's one of the reasons why light is always moving at the speed of light. It has to always be moving. It has no mass, so in order to conserve momentum, it has to continue moving. And that momentum can be used to push things or impart its momentum on something else. So today I'm going to be trying the optical tweezer experiment. In this experiment, I'm going to be trying to use the momentum of light in order to levitate a particle in place. In order to do this, what we need is a beam of light that's focused down to a focal point and then spreads out, kind of like an hourglass shape. So I'm going to be using blue laser light here. You can actually use any color of laser light you want to do this. And I'm going to be using a strong lens that focuses the laser light down to as small a focal point as I can get and then spreads out again. So let me turn it on and show you the focal point here. So you can see I'm gonna spray this fog here and you can easily see the beam of the laser light. See how it converges to that center point and then spreads out. That's exactly what we want. So what we're going to be trying to do here is to get a particle to levitate right in that center focal point there. Now why would a particle be attracted to the center of the focal point? So whenever light reflects off of something or changes direction at all, it has to impart momentum in the opposite direction that it changed. If your light reflects and goes this way, that means it needs to impart momentum on the thing that it hit in the opposite direction. So for example, if I have a spherical lens like this and I shine a laser light through it and it bends it like this, there will actually be a force imparted on that glass sphere in the opposite direction of the light, like this. You can see the same phenomenon when you stick a ball in a stream of water. You can see that when I put this ball in water, the water sticks to the surface of the ball and causes the water to change directions and shoot the other way. And the result of that change direction is that the ball is forced towards the center of the water. It's forced into the water. So the momentum of the water goes this way, so the ball goes the opposite way. Now this same thing actually happens with a particle when it's in a light beam. So let's say we have laser light, and we put a particle that that light can pass through. So you can see that as the light passes through it, it changes direction and goes to the left. But because of that, that means that the particle has to account for this change momentum and be pushed to the right. Now if the particle is small enough, that change in momentum is actually enough to move the particle towards the center of the light and the particle will actually be stable in that center light beam. Just like when I have a ball in a water stream, it'll stay stable in the center of the water stream when I let it go. It just wants to stay right in the center. But overall, with the light and the ball here, there's still a force pushing it away from the light and the water. So if you just have a beam that's straight like this in a Gaussian distribution with the brightest point in the center, then your particle is going to be moved away from the light. So it'll be locked in place in two dimensions, but not three dimensions. So if you wanna lock it in place in three dimensions, then all you do is you focus that beam down to a center point. So that then you get a force distribution that looks like this. So your particle will be forced to the center in all three dimensions. Now what we need to do is to be able to generate a particle right near that focal point of light that's small enough that can be pulled inside of it. In order to do that, I'm just gonna be using a Bic marker here. And why I'm using this is because it has liquid in it and that liquid can heat up when it gets in the laser light and it'll kind of force some particles out of it due to the steam. But then that liquid will dry up and so it'll leave behind just tiny little particles of the ink that get burned. So it's just kind of this graphite particle that's left in the air there. You can see when I stick it in the laser light, 
a bunch of steam comes off and there's particles like smoke particles in the air. The hope here is one of these bigger particles that get shot off the marker will get stuck in the beam. What we need to do in order to get this to work is make a little as air movement as possible. So I'm going to block both sides with these tissue boxes here so that we don't have a lot of air movement. There it is. Got one. Oh, for a second. Oh, right there. Got one. I got one. No way. Look, we got it. Don't move. It's caught in there. The particle's actually floating in the air with light. So it's actually trapped in the laser beam here. You can see that bright spot right in front of it. While all the other particles are just kind of floating around past it, this one's stuck right there. That is amazing. It actually worked. As I mentioned, you can do this experiment with any type of laser. It doesn't even have to be a visible laser. It could even be an infrared laser. What's really cool about using an infrared laser is you can't see the light, but you can just see the particle levitating there. And because it's just optics generating this focal point there, if you move the focal point, the particle will move with it. Just like when I move my sink here, the ball follows it. Now being able to move a particle around in three dimensions is exactly what Dr. Smalley at Brigham Young University has been researching. Using better lasers and better optics, they're able to perfect this so that they can actually get a pretty large particle floating in the air. And what's really neat about this is once they get the particle floating in the air, they can actually shine different lasers on it, not to make the particle float, but just to light up the particle, and they can color the particle anything they want. And I showed this in one of my previous videos. If they move that particle around fast enough by changing the focal point of the laser, then they can actually get that particle to fly around and look like it's a continuous image. And then they can change the colors on it to have any color they want as well. So they can actually generate an image in 3D space with one single particle moving around really fast through the air. So you can use these optical tweezers to make really cool 3D images like this. These optical tweezers are used a lot in industry. They can actually be so precise that you can grab individual cells with the optical tweezers and hold them and move them wherever you want to. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out Action Lab Shorts if you haven't yet, where I do videos similar to this channel, but they're in under a minute. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.